Hi. Hi, Heather. Hi, Deborah. Debbie. Hello. Ida and Anne Marie, Vicki, Lisa. Hello, Bridget. Anelica, welcome. Your camera's not on. I'm not saying hi. <laughs> hey, Liana and Ellen, Natasha, Inez. Good to see you, Inez. I want to see your face. Um, Stephanie, she'll be on a little later. Good to see all of you guys. Awesome. Hey, Jen. Great. All right, we need to start off with a with a testimony, some good news, something the Lord has done to bless you in the last week or two, maybe as you've been working on the miracle list or just whatever. Who would like to share? All right. All right, sister, go ahead. Tab M8. I don't know. Who is that? The, uh, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Yeah, I, I got a testimony I'm really, really uh, happy about. Um, since 1995, I have been taking some medication for mood swings. And I had stopped taking it a week ago. And um, I no longer need it. Yes. God healed me. And uh, I'm so glad about that. I don't, I don't have to use that mood swing meds anymore. And I'm so happy for that. And that was just like this past week. I mean, it's so, wow. I'm so happy. Amen. I so I like, I wanted to share that with you guys. Oh, thank you, Michelle. You've made such great progress. Well, thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. That is, um, that's definitely a praise report. Awesome. I did. Yeah. Um, most of you know, I was on um, psych medication for 18 years, and I am free from that slavery myself. Praise the Lord. He set me free from anxiety, panic disorder, depression, and some other things. <laughs> so um, it feels good to be free. It doesn't mean, I always say this, it doesn't mean that um, the enemy comes knocking. And um, negative, we're going to be talking about negative thoughts tonight. And that is one of the biggest ways, uh, I'd say the number one way, that and, and getting us into fear, how the enemy gets back in, how the enemy torments us, how the enemy gets us to uh, try to go back to our old thinking. And so Michelle is now set free, and she has to continue to renew her mind in this new pattern of thinking for the rest of her life, because old habits die hard. That's not scripture, but it is true, <laughs> right? Old habits oh, yeah. die hard. And, um, and that's just something that we are human beings. We, we, been, uh, we trained, well, the enemy trained our brain to think, and uh, we went along with it, and we have a pattern of thinking that we have adopted over our lifetime. And it takes time, it takes a strong effort to disassemble or tear down the strongholds in the mind, okay? I mean, you hear it on Sunday mornings that the pastor will say, you know, we're tearing down strongholds and we're breaking chains and they say these things, but really the real work, it happens Monday through Saturday Every single day, as you wake up in the morning, as you go through your morning routine, all through the day, into the evening, you have to catch your thoughts. You have to be aware of what you're thinking, who's talking, and then are you ruminating on those thoughts? So um, we're in week four. Welcome to week four of the Miracle List. This is Brother Mike's Miracle List. Welcome. I see some brand new faces. Awesome. Um, we don't have quite everybody on here, but... Uh, they're they're coming on, they're popping on. That's great. Um, I want to begin with a uh, video by Dr. Henry Wright, and he's talking about um, anxiety disorders and panic disorders. A large percentage of our um, American culture, people in our country, and in, in the United States, um, you might be from Canada or someplace else. But in the United States, there's a large percent of people who struggle 
with anxiety um, or, or have a panic disorder. So let's listen to him and then we'll continue. See if I can get this to run smoothly. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Hi, I'm Dr. Henry Wright. I'd like to talk about panic attacks and anxiety. There are really two different things. I was asked to speak on this subject, and I probably should have separated them as individual topics. Now that I've thought about it. But since I've mentioned both, I'll include both. Because panic attacks do involve anxiety. Now, when you study, if I was to go to the DSM-5 manual on psychiatric disorders, I have visited there a few times in my learning curve, <clears throat> I would find that panic attacks actually become phobias. And they're because of a phobia. Now I've added something called phobic thinking, or phobias. And so if I was to put where the horse and the cart is here, then I'd have to add a word called phobias are what create panic attacks. But upstream is an anxiety issue that opens up the phobia that produces a panic attack. Now, I brought this back into focus because I want you to understand the process. And, and so rather than taking anxiety drugs or go into altered states of consciousness to avoid your consciousness, God forbid you lose consciousness with your conscious. So we're not trying to introduce you what the world's trying to do, which is altered states of consciousness, either through drugs or through other weird ways of controlling human psyche. <laughs> Let's talk about phobias, which is the root for panic attacks. If you look at the DSM-5 manual of psychiatric disorders, you'll find that phobias are known as learned behavior. Boy, this is big. This is probably the biggest thing that you've ever heard about unraveling this mystery. If, if a panic attack is an anxiety issue that has become phobic and then releases the panic attacks as a physiological response and it's a learned behavior, then do you think that we might be able to unlearn this pathway? See, your personalities are formed as you go. Your your emotions, your feelings are accumulating either good or not so good as you grow up, as you move through life, depending on your environment and your circumstances, and depending on your mindset. That's why 2 Corinthians 10.5 is so powerful. That you're to hold every thought captive, casting down every imagination, every high and lofty thing that would exalt itself, against the knowledge of God and keep you from obedience to Christ. And that you have an, a readiness to defeat all this disobedience stuff after your obedience is fulfilled. These two scriptures are so key because you can reverse your journey of horror. Now, if your mind is renewed, if you really believe that your mind can be renewed, means your mind can be changed. And your mind is renewed by the washing, the saturation, the, old, the constant flushing of thought of the Word of God. Your mind is renewed by the washing, the flushing of truth based on Scripture. Scripture says you're to be anxious for nothing. You'd have no anxiety. Whether you live or whether you die, you're the Lord's. So much for death. What you eat, what you wear, where you live. You don't even take fond of that. Because God feeds a sparrow, dresses a lily in the field. Have you not read, O ye of little of unbelief? I love that with that scripture, O ye of little faith. Do you not understand that the Father is able to feed the sparrow and clothe the lilies in the field? He's able to care for you. So we end up being preoccupied with the with the phobic failures of a world around us 
and then we assimilate it to our own personalities. So you're trained, aren't you? You're trained by the news reports, you're trained by the negativity of your friends, you're trained by, 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 and all of a sudden you're flooded with impulses that make you phobic. And you wake up in the middle of the night with panic attacks, you wake up in the middle of the night with what if, and you can't go to sleep because what if, what if. The Bible says you take no thought for tomorrow, the evil of today is sufficient unto itself. Phobias will not let you think about today. They're projecting into tomorrow. But the Bible says, take no thought for tomorrow. The evil of today is what you need to defeat. So rather than projecting into the failure of something which creates the anxiety that produces the phobias and then the panic attacks, and your body's responding to the mind-body connection to your head. But behind your head is, a, is who you are as a spirit. And God is not giving the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So maybe you're not, your mind needs to be renewed. Maybe you need to be retrained. Paul said very clearly in Romans 7, I have two laws in my members. So don't you? You have the law of God, and you have the law of sin. You do. law of God says you need to be anxious for nothing. Law of sin says, yeah, I've got to think about it all the time. What's going to go wrong? i got to listen to news reports. I'm going to, I'm not going to live. I'm going to die. How about my children, my grandchildren? My God, it's going to go. God, come quickly. No, you don't want to say that to a quilt. You don't want to say Mar Maranatha. Everybody says. Okay. Um, great. Sorry about that. It went a little too long. But the point I'm so glad that he brought up, he brought up talking about, well, the one thing that he said, uh, he used the word horror. Horror, it's a, you know, it's a horrifying thing to have these negative thoughts, um, having a panic disorder or anxiety. So before I move forward, I'm just going to say a little prayer, okay? Father, I pray that you would open up our ears, Lord, so we can hear. You would open up our eyes so we can see. And you would open up our hearts so we can understand the message that you have for each person to hear tonight. Lord, I'm giving a bunch of information, hoping to make sense of some things. The Holy Spirit, you're the one who speaks to each person individually. So, Lord, I pray that you would speak to each person individually. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, so, I like that clip because he he talks about the the anxiety, phobias, then causing panic disorders. Um, I did a quick search. Over 40 a million Americans report of having some type of anxiety disorder. 40 million Americans. That's a lot of people. I think there's a lot more than that who struggle with anxiety and maybe even panic disorders, but they've never been diagnosed. And so the most glorious thing, news about this topic is, as long as you have your mind, you have control over your mind, you are able to be free. You can be free from depression. You can be free from anxiety. You can be free from phobias. You can be free from panic disorders. And there's more. There's more than that, right? The mental illness, uh, there's so many of them that have been characterized. And so negative thoughts, you know, you can only have one thought at a time. Only one thought. Now, they might come in racing. They might come in bombarding. Negative thoughts are like fiery darts. They accuse, they are negative, they sound just like you. They seem reasonable, even truthful, convincing. These negative thoughts quote scripture. They contradict scripture, they condemn. They'll vindicate you. They'll tell you what you need to do to stand up for yourself and what you should tell that other person. 
right? Um, they'll give you a retaliation plan when someone's hurt you. Th these negative thoughts will set up other people. They'll tell you lies. They blame, they're fearful. They promote fear or worry. They're full of anxiety. They come in quickly. They are relentless. Has this ever happened to you in the middle of the night? It is tormenting. They make you feel strange, confused, hopeless. They make you feel bitter. Second Corinthians 10 tells us to take every thought captive and cast down imaginations. And this is so important. And you may say, how can I do that when they're coming in so quickly? How can I do that when I've been agreeing with them for the last five minutes? Now what do I do? I'm guilty. And then the enemy comes in and says, oh, yeah, you're guilty. You've been ensnared by the devil now. What are you going to do? Now you got to work your way out of it. And really all you need to say is stop. Shut up. Enough. I'm not thinking about that. No, I am not going to stay mad at that person. No, I'm not going to hold on to that offense. No, I'm not going to get revenge. Shut up, devil. Am I the only one? <laughs> if you do not catch your negative thoughts over time, they will torment you with depression, anxiety, and various other mental illnesses. Mental illness, illness is not something that comes on all at once. It may feel like it, but it's really something that's been brewing over time. Negative thoughts, worrying about tomorrow, being fearful. So um, I wanted to, I wanted to, before I talk about, I'm going to be talking about um, Brother Mike's book, Plan of Spirits, tonight. Um, but I wanted to just give you a couple of couple of things here, a couple of facts. According to the, the National Science Foundation, the average person has 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. And 80% of them are negative. How they figure this out, I don't know. 80% of the thoughts are negative. And 95% of the thoughts are repetitive. If the negative thoughts are repetitive, then you have a greater chance of catching them and recognizing them. And if you can recognize them, you can defeat them. So how do you know? I, I um, When I first got the miracle list and I came across this particular item I thought negative thoughts I don't gosh I was I was going through deliverance I, you know I had newly moved to Phoenix I was making new friends things were going well I couldn't really I couldn't discern what negative thoughts I was having um, and so maybe you're like that maybe you're like no I don't even have negative thoughts I'm a cheerful person I'm a happy person well let me ask you um, you ever feel paranoid like, oh, that person, they're out to get me. They have something against me. Um, these are some terms that are used with people who have chronic negative thoughts. They're, um, you know, are you being ever called a negative Nancy or a downer or a drag? Debbie Downer, a naysayer, prophet of doom, a doomsayer, a cynic, a defeatist, um, Mrs. Unhappy in the mud, a party pooper. Like these are just some terms that are used by people. They, they will um, call others these terms by saying, you're, you're such a negative person. What is wrong with you? The, the glass is half empty for you. Okay. May, maybe you describe yourself that way. Um, it's often said that while optimists are happier, Pessimists are more correct. Optimists are happier and pessimists are more correct. That's a joke. You can laugh. <laughs> um, so negative thoughts, thinking can be seriously affect the way you think about yourself and the world. Your mind can be getting thinking negative and then it will 
turn, you'll turn against yourself and then you turn against the world. And that leads to an unhappy life for sure. And I just said, you know, it could lead to mental illness, such as depression, anxiety disorder, personality disorder, schizophrenia, all of that. Um, I want to read to you, I don't know how long, but, you know, you, you get these books. I know how, you have these books on your shelf and, and you're like, I read a little bit, but I never really read it. Um, how many of you have obtained this book? All right, we have quite a few people. Plan of Spirits, and I'm gonna I'm gonna share a picture of it at the end. Um, Plan of Spirits is by Mike Smith, and it discusses the condition he calls autonomic processing, and it begins with thought. Um, so I want to read. I just want to read a little bit. Um, some some excerpts, I guess, from this book. He, he does, he lists a whole bunch of mental illnesses here. And he attributes that the negative thinking is in fear is what the, the underlying root cause of these mental illnesses are. Um, stress disorder, agoraphobia, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder or GAD, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, phobia, post-traumatic stress disorder, disassociative identity disorder, DID, or formerly known as per multiple personality disorder, psychotic disorders, delusions, schizoaffective, schizophrenia, schizoform, schizo schizophrenia form, and other psychotic disorders, uh, major depressive disorders, and even insomnia. Um, and there's more, there's more of these conditions that, that they didn't just pop up in your life. They, they developed over time and it happened here in the mind. And like I said, if you still have a sound mind, then you are still able to be free. Um, so in the book, he talks about, um, seducing spirits. And I thought it worthwhile to cover this with you. He said in 1 Timothy 4.1, the Apostle Paul mentions seducing spirits. The Greek word for seducing spirits is planos, which means deceiving. He says, my experience has shown these spirits attack humans by entering the frontal lobe of the brain, affecting the control and judgment centers of the mind. When a person has been affected infected with seducing spirits over a lengthy period, it is difficult to effect a complete deliverance because the spirits have not been properly identified, rejected, and renounced. Spirits that enter the brain in childhood blend into an individual's personality and become a normal part of their daily thought process and are difficult to isolate and identify. The person usually doesn't recognize them and in most cases does not know they have them. Over a period of years, a spiritual dementia slowly takes hold of the person's mind, which prevents recovery. If unchecked, it can lead to a documented mental illness, severe memory and brain deficits, even total disability. In a lecture, I heard him talk about how it begins. When a child is, just having their own thoughts, the, the spirits will say to them, hey, look at that bird, look at that bird, look at that bird. And the moment the child looks at the bird, the spirit was able to get the child to obey. And then they do it again. Look at the cat, look at the cat, look at, okay, they looked at the cat. And then again, the spirit's like, oh, they obeyed. It wasn't anything bad. And now, and now the child's, hearing in their mind thoughts and they think it's their own. And so they easily obey them. Nothing threatening about them. But as time goes on and life happens, trauma, different types of experiences, rejection, fear starts to come in. These thoughts will change 
and then they become very negative. And even in children, you can see them, um, you know, they get down on their self, themselves. They don't like themselves. I, or I got a bad grade. I'm a terrible person. They make those associations because those are the spirits talking to their mind and they think it's their own. It's in their own language. It's in their own voice. Yes, absolutely. Children can be demonized 100%. Mm -hmm. I think the youngest child that I ever did deliverance on was about three weeks old. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, it doesn't, I think most, I think everyone um, has gained spirits into their body or brain or their soul over time. Um, just a quick review of how spirits get into the body. Most of you know this, but I'll just review it for some of our new visitors. Um, you know, spirits get into a person two different ways. They come in through our five senses, through sight, taste, touch, smell, hearing, that I cover five. Um, and then they come in also through spiritually, through generational curses, through trauma, through sin, transferring of spirits and through curses like witchcraft and witchcraft curses. Um, and then he goes on to say in this book, you know, can Christians have spirits? And he, and he talks about, yes, in, in 1 Timothy 3 and in 2 Timothy chapter 2, um, it says these scriptures. It says, a bishop must not be a novice. He's talking about who could be in leadership in the church. A bishop must not be a novice, least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. They must also be um, have a good report or good be a good witness of them who are without the unsaved world, least they fall into the reproach and snare of the devil. And in Second Timothy, it says, the servant of the Lord must not strive or argue, be argumentative. But be gentle to all, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those who oppose them. If perhaps God would give them repentance to, to the acknowledgement of the truth, of to the acknowledging of the truth, so that may recover themselves from the snare of the devil, who have taken them, taken them captive by his will. So he goes on in the book to talk about these words. The word condemnation is actually judgment. The Greek word for report is witness. The Greek word for reproach is verbal abuse or slander. Have you ever felt verbally abused or slandered in your mind? In your mind, have you ever felt that? Accusation after accusation after, and then you wonder like, am I even saved? What is going on? The Greek word for snare is trap. Um, if you listen to Brother Mike's teachings, he'll frequently talk about the pagis. It's a trap. It's that hole in the ground that's covered up by the leaves, right? And you walk across and fall right into it. Um, we can be, we can fall into the trap of the enemy. The word for acknowledge means full knowledge or complete knowledge. So when somebody falls into sin or they're being very argumentative or difficult to work with, um, that bishop or that church leadership person tries to help that person come back into the full knowledge of the truth. And the Greek word for taken captive is to be captured or imprisoned alive. He says, these passages clearly teach that a born-again Christian can be judged trapped, verbally slandered, and taken captive by evil spirits and Satan if they backslide, walk in the flesh, or allow sin and pride to have dominion over them. Paul's description is an excellent illustration of the condition of a Christian who is infected in their body and brain with spirits. These, these people are the lukewarm and carnal Christians of the church. They typically lead unproductive, powerless, and dysfunctional Christian lives. Such were some of you. 
<laughs> as such were some of you back in the day, right? <laughs> Living unproductive lives. Um, so there's a lot of great information in here about mentally ill, about a person who's double-minded, who is um, doing and saying things that they don't even remember. It's excellent. It's an easy read. If you have, um, have ever been diagnosed with mental illness or you know someone who's been diagnosed with, or they should be diagnosed with, you could benefit from reading, um, reading in this book his discoveries. So the last part that I wanted to talk to you about is um, something that Mike coined himself, a term called autonomic processing. Have you heard this term before? Autonomic processing. The name of the book again is Plano Spirits. And after I finish, I'm going to show you um, a picture of it on Amazon. Okay. And I think um. Stephanie dropped the name of the book and a link in the chat. Yep. So I'm just going to read a little bit to you again. Thank you for listening. Hopefully this is beneficial to somebody. Um, he says, during my secular counseling career, he was a counselor for 25 years and then got saved, delivered, and started a hardcore Christianity. He said, I noticed a condition that I did not understand. Some clients, relatives, friends, etc., develop thinking patterns that could not change regardless of the assistance received psychologically or medically. They seem to be programmed for failure and chronic negative thinking. Does that sound like somebody you know? <laughs> I received a revelation from the Lord, he says, that like things in the natural world, like gravity, if I drop this pen, it's going to fall. Whirlpools, cause and effect, sowing and reaping the seasons, human gender and reproduction, the operation of the universe, etc. These things are in motion. Like our solar system is in motion. It's not, nothing is stopping it. It is running on its own. No one has to tell the sun to rise. The sun just rises. So many things in, in our world, they run on their own. He said, he says that, that they operate on their own, the human mind could be programmed to do the same. Mike said that God showed me that a person's dominant negative thoughts could be programmed to run on their own, uncontrollably escaping the person's free will. That sounds scary to me. He said, I had to create a new psychiatric, new psychiatric terms to explain what I have learned. Um, the first one is negative thought disorder. The second one is obsessive compulsive negative thought disorder. And the last one is autonomic processing. Autonomic processing is the third, the final and third step to the process. It is caused by spirits putting chronic, negative, and deceptive thoughts into the mind over years and decades. Once the person reaches autonomic processing, their thoughts are lost to a reprobate mind that's spoken of in Romans chapter one and Titus chapter one. They cannot change or be cured on their own. Autonomic processing is a condition like a whirlpool. Thoughts are like leaves circling around the whirlpool. If they get too close to the center, they are sucked into the vortex and cannot get out. Once a person reaches this condition, only severe trauma or a major miracle can cause the mind to reset and allow the person to renew their mental patterns. The key is to assist a Christian before autonomic processing takes hold. He uh, says that the greatest illustration of autonomic processing, in his opinion, is found in Genesis chapter 6 in the story of Noah, where the entire planet was overtaken by perversion and 
and negative thinking and he believes it's going to happen again in the great tribulation so why do i why am i talking about all this well we have our thoughts and um different things in our lives trigger negative thoughts we get triggered uh this week i love to talk about my personal experience because maybe it helps but this week oh my gosh uh, actually it was last week right i had um someone someone uh they've been bugging me for a while and so i um I like had it, you know, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back, you know, that, that phrase. Well, that kind of like happened to me. And I was like, that's it. I'm tired of this. But the problem, you know, is not the person irritating me. The real, the, the real problem became when my mind would not shut up and it kept thinking about this person. I kept thinking about what they did, what they said, what they might have been thinking, how they might feel about me, or they did it on purpose. And it would not. And I mean, I would wake up in the middle of the night and my brain would be telling them off. And I'd be like, no, I don't want to think like that. <laughs> okay. And, and I say it was like two days of torture because I... I wasn't catching it fast enough it, it would get going in my mind and i'm thinking oh yeah you know that's reasonable to think that way and i don't want someone to take advantage of me and you know maybe i should say this to them and you know i'm telling you the enemy was giving me so many ideas to tell this person you know this and that and the other thing uh, some of the ideas i was like i can't say that that's terrible <laughs> Like, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like relentless. And I finally, I finally, um, well, thankfully I had a dream. I, I call it a, a worry dream. It's where you're processing in your mind, in your dream, what's going on in your life. And, um, the dream was so ridiculous that I woke up laughing and I was like, that's it. I am done being offended. The thing that happened was sm so small in comparison to what the enemy created in my mind. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is out of control. What is going on? Uh, and I just started laughing and I just said, that's it. I, I, um, I, I'm literally, I don't care. I, I do not care. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes, the enemy will inflate so much. So it was so ridiculous. And it was like making me sick. I was like physically feeling the stress from so many negative thoughts. I knew they were not my thoughts. And I was battling them. I was really battling them, fighting them. And so maybe you have had this experience. Maybe you have this experience every day. I, I recognize there are some of you who are battling every single day of your life. You're fighting and you're exhausted. I, I just want to take a moment to recognize I, you're in, you're at, we're at war. It is war. It is tormenting and it is horrible. But we have to get to a point where we can see the ridiculousness of it. The enemy will throw so many just outlandish uh, and trying to get us to figure it out. Like that was the one thing. The enemy was trying to like giving me ideas on how to not fix it, but figure out what went wrong. I'm like, I can't figure that out. I have no idea on the other end what's going on. All right. Oh, it, it just was, it was just relentless. So, um, number, number four on the miracle list addresses negative thoughts. And, um, what he says is we have to recognize, you know, maybe make a list 
maybe brainstorm a list, an actual list of the negative thoughts you have, okay? The negative thoughts you have, maybe it's about yourself, maybe it's about somebody else, maybe it's about the future, it's about your current situation, your job, write them down. Write them down. Some of you have pen and paper right now, and you, you even know some negative thoughts that hit you on a regular basis. I'm never going to get well. Write that one down. Write it down. Yes. Excuse me. These are re repetitive thoughts. You know what they are. This isn't going to, my healing's not going to last. That's not your thought. That's the enemy. Michelle, the enemy is going to come at you with, you're going to lose your healing. Oh, you sinned. You're going to lose your healing. The enemy is going to use all kinds of things, especially tailored for you to get you in a bad spot. So take a minute. If you have pen and paper, write down. What are those negative thoughts? My family's never going to get saved. My mother's never going to get any better. My life is not going to change. I'm going to be stuck here forever. When has life never changed? You know, that's one thing. Life always changes. And especially when we're submitted to God, he brings us step by step, doesn't he? He definitely does. We have to declare war on these thoughts, but, but you may not be able to declare war if you don't know what they are. I've often heard um, my clients say, I don't know it's a negative thought. You ever, I would say if you're ruminating on something, there's negative thoughts in there. Overthinking over analyzing, trying to figure it out. Guess what? There's somebody who has the answer. And that somebody lives inside of you. And he wants to tell you the answer. And you don't have to figure it out. You have the answer. You do not have to twist your mind around trying to find the answer. Now, should we search for things? Yeah. I mean, the scriptures talk about that, um, searching things out. But when it gets to the point where you're tormented by it, you know that's the enemy. You know it's the enemy. And the enemy doesn't have a right to you. You are purchased by the blood of Jesus. You are daughter of the most high king. That devil doesn't have a right to talk to you about your screw up. I'll say that again. <laughs> the devil doesn't have a right to correct you. Only your heavenly father has the position and the authority to correct you. So stop listening to the devil trying to correct you when you screw up. Okay. I had this, I, 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 you know, it was a little while ago. I did something I knew. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was sin. And the enemy was pounding my mind. And I finally said, you do not have the right to speak into this situation right now. And I said, father, I know that I messed up. I'm sorry. Could we talk about it later? And, and I trust that he heard me. And I just said, devil, you're going to shut up. Because now I, I just asked the Lord, we're going to discuss it later. And now you, devil, don't have a right to talk to me and tell me I did this wrong and I did that wrong. And how can I call myself a Christian and blah, blah, blah. And all, all that mess. And so every negative thing that came into my head after I said, Lord, could we take care of this later? I knew it was the devil and I forcefully rejected it. And I got angry. 
Some of you have to get angry. You cannot sit there passively, devil, stop, leave me alone. You're not a little girl in a dress on the playground. You're a warrior. You have to fight. This devil wants to take your mind. This devil is trying to take your health. This devil is trying to take your prosperity and your relationships and your family and your mental health. You have to fight. You cannot sit by passively. There's a gal that I, I worked with recently. She's being tormented, the poor thing. Um, I, I just want to run up to Northern California and kick those devils out, but I can't do that. She has to get angry. She has to believe that God wants her to be free. And then she can say, enough is enough. I don't care what you do to me. I am turning wrath, my wrath against you. You're turning your wrath against me. Well, guess what? You're not meeting your match. You're meeting someone more powerful because I have the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You have God the Father on your side. You have Jesus praying for you. You have a ministering angel, at least one. You have a heavenly host cheering you on, a whole cloud of witnesses. They're, they're cheering you on. How can you lose? Guess what? You don't lose. It's already be, been won. You have to hate the devil. You have to hate sin. And negative thoughts and tearing yourself down sin. You have to put an end to it. Those negative thoughts, they come in like a little snake, a little slither, like a little cat. I have a cat and she just can enter a room and I don't even know it until she pounces on the bed. <laughs> then I know she's there and she wants to, you know, sit on top of my chest. <laughs> and the devil does that too, right? We'll sit right there. And so that enemy is going to come in like a quiet snake with little thoughts, little thoughts, little negative thoughts, another negative thought. You're never going to make it. You're a screw up. Look, you're a backslider. You're going to get seven more demons. Look, the devil uses scripture to torment us. That is not God. I will say that again. The devil uses scripture to torment us, ladies. It is not the way God the Father speaks to us. God the Father doesn't say, oh, you screwed up. You know what? Seven more demons are coming. He doesn't do that. Oh, you're not perfected in love. I guess, you know, you get to... Have fear. You know, if you could hurry up and be perfected in love, then you wouldn't have so much fear. That's the devil speaking. That is not our father. That's not our father. So, homework. Get your pencils out. <laughs> Get your pencils out. You're going to make a list. I want you to brainstorm. I don't know what your struggle is. I don't know what your war is. I don't know what, what the devil uses to torment you, but you do. Think about it. Think about it and write it down. You know, something happens. Um, I, I did, and every so often, when I know my mind is like going a little out of, out of balance, I'll sit down and I'll start writing down the negative thoughts I'm having. And by like the third one, I'm like, this is ridiculous. These thoughts are so ridiculous. So write it down. Okay. Brainstorm it. Maybe after tonight or, or tomorrow, but don't let like 24 hours pass you. You know, some of you are writing some things down right now, which I think is really good. Write down some of those negative thoughts. Okay. Write them down. I see, I see our sister Bree's getting deliverance just thinking about it. <laughs> She's like, I'm declaring war against these negative thoughts. And they're just coming out. <laughs> Good. And you know, repent. 
for receiving and believing the thought. When you write them down, okay, I, I guess what I should say is when you brainstorm, I want you to brainstorm and, and it's okay if you get 10, 15, 20, 100, 1,000, I don't care. I want you to brainstorm a whole bunch of negative thoughts that have come into your mind and then pick out the top 10, okay? So you're gonna write a whole bunch down and then you're gonna go back through and circle the top 10, the ones that come to you often. They are repetitive. I'm never gonna get out of debt. That's somebody. I'm never gonna be fully well. I'm never gonna be fully delivered. I'm never gonna get out of this apartment. I'm never gonna get out of debt. Did I say that one? Okay. <laughs> That's a common one, right? Um, and then you're going to circle your top 10. And then you're going to go through and you're going to read them, you know? And, and if you're not laughing at the ridiculousness of these negative thoughts, just tell the Lord, say, Lord, I'm so sorry for, for believing and receiving these negative thoughts. Lord, I'm sorry. You just tell them that, okay? You just do a blanket prayer because later you're going to really apologize to God, okay? You're going to break it down. But what I want you to do then is each of these 10, not your 500 negative thoughts, but the 10, okay? The 10 repetitive ones. You're going to say, no, I reject that thought. That thought, I'm never going to get out of debt. No, I reject you. I reject that thought and I renounce it. And guess what? It's a person talking to you. So now go ahead and rebuke that person. You demon talking to me, telling me I'm never going to get out of debt. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. And so you want to do those three steps for each of your 10. Okay. Each of your 10. Um, There's a sister that just posted in the chat. Stephanie, could you maybe get her information and we could reach out to her personally? Emma, Emmy is your name. Thanks. So number one, you're gonna make a list. You're gonna brainstorm. Okay, I'll, I'll go over to Nick, um, Lauren. Um, you're gonna brainstorm and then you're gonna pick out the top 10. So you're just gonna say, Lord, I, I am so sorry for believing and receiving these thoughts, okay? And then you're gonna reject the thought. You're gonna say it out loud. No, I reject this. My living situation is never gonna change. I reject that thought. I renounce that thought. And devil, I rebuke you. You devil that is telling me that, I rebuke you, okay? And then you're gonna find, okay, so this is step, I guess it's number six. Okay, make a list, pick the top 10, one, repent, two, three, reject, four, renounce, five, rebuke, six, you like these steps, number six, I want you to, for, for the rest of the week, you're going to find scripture that shoves it in the devil's face for telling you that lie. I'm never going to get out of debt. What scripture or a paraphrase of a scripture can you use to tell the devil to shut up? Somebody, unmute and tell me real quick. The devil tells you, you're never going to get out of debt. It's not about debt, but I found um, earlier today there was, it happened in the chat even, so I'm going to speak it here. <laughs> okay, um, it was... Um, a lie that like probably the biggest, deepest lie the devil tells me is that I am abandoned when I'm in need or distress and God is not here. And somebody, I think it was Deb, wrote um, something, a scripture that was already starting to come to me in the situation that was really strongly um coming at me. And it was Psalm, I think, 46. I think it was the God, God is my strength and something, but it was, it ended in, um, 
He is our ever present um, help in trouble. Yes, that's what it was. Excellent. So, Lauren, I know you and you are not a weak person <laughs> by any stretch. <laughs> Thank you. When that devil tells you you are abandoned, God is far from you. Shut up, devil. He's my ever present help in time of trouble. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You ladies are already doing this. We're just going over it, okay? And maybe there's there's ones that you haven't written down yet, but they're repetitive. And, and maybe they haven't come to mind yet, but the Lord is going to bring it to mind. If you're not in a battle, you're headed into one, okay? We have, we have battles and we have victories and we get rest and then we head back into battle. Right? Yes, that's a good one, Marcella. I shall not be in want. I I, I, I frequently say the Lord is my shepherd. Okay. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is, shut up devil, the Lord is my shepherd. Okay. Yeah, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's my provider. I don't know how he's going to fix the mess, but he's going to do it. Because I'm, I'm his little girl. He wants to help me. Yeah, he wants to help us. So that's why we all gathered on here tonight, because we need a reminder that the Lord wants to help. He is our ever-present help. He's always present. The devil says, you figured out. God helps those who help themselves. The devil will say to you, you have to be responsible and figure it all out. You know what our job is? Is to trust the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him. And he will direct it. He'll make it straight. He will make it straight. Yeah, good. Everybody, you you have these scriptures. Now, this is a big challenge. You're going to write a whole big long list, and you're going to find 10 of them, and you're going to have scriptures. Could you repeat the scriptures? Of course you can. Um, you know, but but throughout the week, practice catching the thought. And rebuking that devil with the scripture. It is written. Just like Jesus did. It is written. It is written. You have to exercise self-control. Especially if you're in a fight with a spouse right now. Or you're in a fight with you know, somebody at work. Or, or just some. There's tension. There's uneasiness. There's there's something. There's, some, there's always something going on. Right? So. Or, or, or maybe it's you. You, you, you're battling yourself. Um, <laughs> you guys are my support group. So I went to a wedding yesterday, and um, and I, I wore a dress, and then I saw the pictures of me in the dress, and I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, I think I need to lose some weight. <laughs> you ever feel like that? <laughs> yeah. I was like whoa what how did that happen <laughs> i was like a little shocked so um that was like I, and i had to like really stop my thoughts from spiraling out of control because that that's definitely my weakness one of them um but but that that was the enemy right the enemy will even twist our perception of things definitely and isn't it a very cunning um, device that he uses? Cameras, videos, lighting to make lighting. it all like angles. look like angles to make it all look like <laughs> we're yeah exactly that we need to lose weight and everything and yeah 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 the camera yeah. puts on that that illusion that it looks like we're heavier than we really are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's right, Carly. Um, I'll just be honest, like I said, 
you guys are my like little support group. So um, I kept hearing the phrase in my mind, you are not aging well. I, it was telling me over and over and over again, you are not aging well. You know, the enemy, yeah, he's such a jerk. He will use whatever it is that he believes because he's been studying us, right? He's been studying us and he knows how to just get that knife right in there, nice and deep. You know, what? It, maybe for you, it, it has to do with intelligence. Maybe it's your career. Maybe it's your marital status. Maybe it's your child status, you know? Um, the enemy will use these negative thoughts to tear us down, to weaken us. And they don't just come in like one every hour. No, they're coming in like 500 every 10 minutes. They're, they're relentless. And, and the goal is to wear you down, to get you to the point where, you know, you're crying over, you know, boiling over the spaghetti on the stove, you know, like it, it they want to wear us down. So um, we just have to recognize it and we have to give ourselves grace. We have to be patient with ourselves. Okay. Yeah. You gave into the negative thoughts <laughs> and you ended up in a bad place. Okay. That's over now. Now you're where you are. You're still God's lovely daughter. You're still strong in the Lord and, and mighty in power. You still have the full armor of God. You still have the scripture to war with. You're in the present. Don't worry about the past and keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. So, so that's what I got for you tonight. <laughs> Negative thoughts. You guys got the homework? You going to do the homework? Who's going to do the homework? All right. Awesome. Good. Excellent. Yay. Look at everybody. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yes, that's right. The, the desire to hurt that person who hurt you will dissipate. Those negative thoughts fuel the fire of revenge and retaliation. We can't get to be offended, sisters. We have to let it go. We have to let it go. Yeah. We got to be good at letting it go. Really good. So.